Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Correcting the occlusion. Usually during the processing pr procedure, minor tooth movement occurs. Therefore, it is necessary after processing to correct this inaccuracy. The materials needed to do this are your articulator, the processed dentures, a selection of green stones and a heatless stone, the straight hand piece, Madam Butterfly articulating paper, and the blue uh, carbon inked paper, and a mixture of some abrasive uh, paste. For this exercise, these dentures have been processed via the split cast technique. The processed dentures are allowed to remain on the stone model, and they now are returned to the mounting with these keys so that this post-processing uh, bite correction can be done. The procedure to Place, these, place the mounting and the master cast back together utilizes a fast cut wheel in the uh, dental lathe. In small grooves are placed in the master cast and in the mounting. And this is done on each side. Now the same thing of course would be done for the upper denture. A small mix of quick set plaster has been made and it is carefully added into these prepared grooves. This lutes the master cast that still has the processed denture on it to the original mounting. The process dentures and master casts with their mounting rings are returned to the articulator. Oftentimes, or usually, you will note that the posterior area is in contact prematurely. This is for two reasons. One, oftentimes the retromolar pad area and heel area are over waxed in the wax up and now that it is acrylic, it is premature. And secondly, the processing procedure usually uh, is such that the t minor tooth movement occurs most in the posterior area. So usually the heels or the posterior teeth will be premature uh, in occlusion or in contact when the uh, casts are returned to the articulator. This can also be noticed by the incisive pin uh, position in relationship to the table. As you can see here, the incisal pin is about two millimeters from contact. And this again shows that the posterior area is premature. Now, this can best be marked either with the use of the red uh, ribbon or the blue articulating paper. For television, I think the blue paper will mark a little bit uh, easier so that you can see it. However, for discriminating uh, marking, I think the red ribbon, when you use it, probably will be easier for you. 
Let's see if we can mark these prematurities. You can see here that the heel is is marking uh, quite heavily in the blue ribbon and also the lower buckle cusps. Now to reduce the heel portion we're going to do this in a heatless stone. For the tooth portion, we will use smaller uh, green stones. In this case, I'm going to use a knife-edged green stone. Now, these premature contacts need to be ground until all of the teeth are in contact. In this example, I'm grinding on the inclines, the occlusal inclines of the lower buccal cusp, which is in premature contact with the occlusal inclines of the upper lingual cusps. After our initial grinding, you can see that the heel and, and tuberosity area now um, does not touch. It was premature and we've ground off both the stone cast and also some of the processed acrylic back there and now it does not touch. Now the grinding that we are doing now is for centric occlusion. In review, centric occlusion is maximum contact of the teeth or Hopefully, in this example, example, all of the upper lingual cusps will be in contact with the fossas of the lower teeth. So we do our marking with our articulating paper, and we hope that we can see con uh, marks of the upper lingual cusps and the lower fossas. And in this case, we have some contacts of the lower buccal cusps on both sides and also the central fossa. And we've got pretty good contact on the one side of the upper lingual cusps, but on this side we still need to develop some contacts. You can see that one side's marking heavier than the other side. So in this case, we need to reduce some of the heavy contacts in order to pick up some of the light contacts. Now, the reduction for centric occlusion will be done basically by allowing the cusp tips to fully seat in the fossas. Before we do that, though, I'm going to make the upper lingual cusp tips a little bit sharper and a little bit less broad so that I'm going to remove some of the some of the area around the tips of the cusps. Okay, now I'm going to grind on the lower in order to get those lingual cusps to seat in the fossas of the lower.
Now, after that initial grinding, we will mark it again with our paper. Again, this is just centric occlusion. The articulator is locked in its rearmost position. Now, see now the upper, we're developing good contacts on all the lingual cusps of the upper posterior teeth, and we're starting to pick up contacts on the molars. We still have not picked up any contacts on the bicuspids. Similarly, on the lower teeth, we are developing contacts on the central fossas of the lower molars. Now, for centric occlusion, I'm going to continue grinding just as I have, making the upper lingual cusps in contact with the lower fossas of the lower posterior teeth. The grinding for cent centric occlusion has been completed, and contacts are seen on all the posterior teeth. No contact should occur in the anterior teeth. In centric occlusion, contacts in the posterior teeth should occur at the depth of the sulcus and at the tip of the supporting cusps. The supporting cusps, as you know, are the maxillary lingual cusps and the mandibular buccal cusps. Now, the contact on the supporting cusp should be at the tip of the cusp. And you can see that I have ground all of the contact on the inclined planes and only left contact at the tip of the supporting cusp. Also, you can see that in the central sulcus, the contacts uh, of the mandibular buccal cusps are at the depth of the sulcus in on flat planes. Similarly, you can see the mandibular uh, contacts, in which contacts occur on the supporting cusps, which are the mandibular buccal cusps, and the contacts, as marked, are only at the tip of the cusp, and also contacts are at the central sulcus of the mandibular posterior teeth, and those are the contacts, of course, from the maxillary lingual cusps. All the contacts are either on the tip of the supporting cusps or at the depth of the fossa. Now, this is the grinding for centric occlusion. As we've said earlier, the articulator this whole time has been in its locked position, condylar position in centric occlusion. Now, after this grinding uh, has been completed, you can see that the incisal pin has returned to the, uh, in contact with the table. So our occlusal vertical dimension has been restored to where it was when we set the teeth with our patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.